Welcome to this demonstration on managing vSphere with Kubernetes using vRealize operations. In this demonstration, I'll walk you through the content available within vRealize operations and how you can operationalize it to successfully manage your workload management domains. vRealize operations includes vSphere with Kubernetes content out of the box and all workload management objects are detected automatically through the vCenter cloud account. We're going to start off by taking a look at the dashboards within vRealize operations. The first dashboard we're going to take a look at is the workload management configuration dashboard. This provides high level information across all of your workload management domains, such as the number of clusters, hosts, namespaces, TKG clusters, and pods. And right below that, we can see the configuration of all of our Kubernetes objects, such as the Kubernetes version of our supervisor clusters, whether or not our namespaces are running, and the version of tools being used by our vSphere pods. So with this dashboard, we can see how consistent or inconsistent our environment is. I can also see the distribution of how many vCPUs are configured across all of my pods, as well as the amount of memory that's given to them. And if I scroll down here, I can see information related to each of my objects. So for my supervisor clusters, I can see the version of Kubernetes that they're running, the IP address of the cluster node, as well as the number of objects that are running on them. I can also see what's running on my namespaces and if there are any limits configured for them. So for example, this namespace doesn't have any limits set for it, whereas my other namespaces do. And down here I can see the configuration of all of my pods, such as the number of CPUs, the amount of memory, disk space given to it, as well as information on the virtual machine version and VM tools versions. And then finally for my TKG clusters, I can see across the cluster, see if there are any limits configured, and how many virtual machines are supporting this cluster. Now moving on to the next dashboard is the Workload Management Inventory Dashboard. Again, this dashboard is going to give me some very high level information across my entire environment as far as the number of clusters, TKG clusters, pods, etc. And then down here I have some properties and metrics for the object selected within the Relationships widget. So if I go ahead and click on this vSphere cluster, I can see the properties and metrics for this cluster such as the number of virtual machines, the capacity, as well as the demands on my CPU, memory, and disk. And then if I scroll down here again, I can see some specific information to each of the objects within this cluster. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll up here and take a look at my namespaces. As you can see in the relationships widget, we have the vCenter all the way on the left, and on the right is our namespaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here to expand them. And then I'm going to expand this namespace and finally, see all the pods that are running in it. And so if I select this pod, we can see its properties, such as the number of virtual CPUs, the amount of memory that it has, as well as metrics related to its performance. So is this pod struggling for resources? In this case, it's not. Now, if I look at my TKG cluster, I can go up here and expand out the namespace, expand out the cluster, and then expand the virtual machines inside the cluster. So here you can see all of my worker nodes as well as my control plane VM. So let's click on the first worker node. And again, I can see properties such as the number of virtual CPUs, the amount of disk space, memory that it has. But then down here, this is pretty interesting. I seem to have some contention happening here as you can see with the CPU ready metric. So if I go ahead and hover over this, we can see that the CPU ready has hit close to 80%. So that's a bit of a problem. Now what we can do is dive into the details of this TKG cluster and see what's going on. So this is the summary page of the TKG cluster and really on this one page we can see information such as the number of virtual machines, any active alerts, utilization, and performance metrics. And if we expand out the sidebar, we can see our TKG cluster, but also all of its related objects. So for example, if I wanted to take a look at the vSphere cluster, I could just open up the cluster compute resource here and I could get all of the details of the vSphere cluster that this TKG cluster lives on. So this makes navigation a lot more simpler. But we're gonna dive a little bit deeper here and see why this cluster has been seeing contention. Let's go into the CPU metrics and I wanna take a look at the CPU demand. So how much CPU is this cluster asking for? Now let's compare that to any limits that are imposed on this cluster. And we can zoom in here to get a better view of what's happening. If we look at the high watermark here, we can see that this TKG cluster has been asking for almost three gigahertz. 
However, if we look here, we can see that limits are imposed on this cluster at 2 gigahertz. So our cluster is clearly asking for more CPU than it's allowed to consume. It's asking for nearly 3 gigahertz, but we're only allowed to give it 2, and that's why we're seeing contention. So what we can do is jump into vCenter here and take a look at the namespace. Now over here you can see the capacity and usage for this namespace, and look at this, this is a 2 gigahertz limit set on CPU. And this is exactly what we saw in vRealize Operations. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this limit. And vRealize Operations showed us that our TKG cluster is asking for 3 gigahertz of CPU. And I want to make sure that there's enough headroom for future demand, so I'm going to set this to 4 and then click OK. So now we can see the limit is set to 4 gigahertz. And if we jump back over to vRealize Operations, we can see that new limit is reflected here. And we can also stack these two metrics on top of each other to better visualize what we just did. And so this is the limit, and this is where we increased it to 4 gigahertz. And then this here is the demand peak for our TKG cluster. This is where it was asking for 3 gigahertz. So you can see we've got all this extra headroom in here, and I think we can say that we've solved this problem. Now let's take a look at what vRealize Operations can do to help us with capacity planning. I'm going to start off by opening the vSphere cluster, and then we're going to click on the Capacity tab. And within here we can see how much time remaining we have for each resource, CPU, memory, and disk space. And up at the top it's saying that we have 239 days remaining, and that's based on the fact that we are most constrained by disk. And as you can see here, vRealize Operations has already selected the most constrained resource. And down here we can see our disk space utilization trended out into the future. And so this trend is what vRealize Operations is using to predict how many days worth of capacity we have remaining, right? Once that line intersects with our capacity line, we're out of space. Similarly, I can look at CPU, which down here it's actually pretty flat, but you can see vRealize Operations is already starting to detect patterns in our CPU utilization. So let's map that out for future planning. So that's time remaining, but what I really want to show you is the number of virtual machines remaining. Because we can use this for getting an idea of how much capacity is remaining from a TKG perspective, for example. So right here, vRealize Operations is saying that we have enough capacity remaining for 154 virtual machines, and that's based on this average VM profile. So what I can do for TKG is I can actually create a new profile. So if I click on Add, I can configure this profile, I'm going to call it TKG small node, and I can configure these virtual machines manually, or because I have TKG already installed in my environment, I can actually just import it from existing objects. So if I just run a filter for TKG cluster one, I can actually go ahead and I can select this worker node, and we're going to build a VM profile based on this worker node. So you can see that it's already configured the CPU, memory, disk space, etc. for this virtual machine. So now if I click OK, I'm going to add this, click OK here. Then what you're going to see is vRealize Operations is going to calculate the number of nodes that we could potentially deploy to this cluster for this point in time. But vRealize Operations can also help us plan capacity for future projects. So in this example, we have a TKG cluster that our developers have been working to build out. And now they'd like to deploy 20 more identical clusters for an upcoming project. Now we want to make sure that we're going to have enough capacity for all these new TKG clusters in our vSphere cluster. So with vRealize Operations what if planning scenarios, I can actually go in and model that. So I'm going to open up the what if planning and then click on the add VMs scenario. Now the first step is to give this scenario a name. So I'm going to call this new TKG clusters. Next, I need to pick where I'm going to deploy these to. So I'm going to deploy these in cluster one in my VCF workload environment. Now from here, I could either manually configure these virtual machines and tell vRealize Operations how many CPUs, how much memory, how much disk space that these VMs are going to require, as well as their expected utilization and annual growth. However, let's make this a little bit easier because we already have our TKG cluster deployed. Why don't we just clone that? So I'm going to select import from existing VM and just put in a quick filter here for TKG cluster one. And now I have the option to select all four of these virtual machines. 
pretty simple. So I'm going to click OK. Now they want 20 more of these clusters. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in 20, 20, 20, and 20 for my worker nodes and for my control plane. Now if I scroll down here, we have some additional vSAN configuration information. So this is for uh, host failures to tolerate the RAID level that we want for vSAN, as well as the deduplication ratio. So 1.5 to 1 is a pretty conservative ratio. Uh, I can actually go into one of my vSAN dashboards and get the real ratio here, but 1.5 to 1 is pretty accurate for this environment. Now I'm not gonna deploy these virtual machines today, but I'm going to deploy them at the end of the month. So I'm gonna set my start date to July 31st, and then development estimates they're going to need these clusters for about two months for this project. So I'm going to leave the end date at October 13th. So now we're ready to run this scenario. And vRealize Operations is going to take all of this data and see if we're going to have enough capacity for the duration of this project. And unfortunately, in this case, we don't because there is a disk space deficit of almost 9 gigabytes. Now this doesn't mean that we don't have enough capacity to deploy these today because we have 132 days worth of capacity. However, by deploying these clusters, we take that down to 91 days, which is before the projected end of this project. Now being over by eight gigabytes is obviously not a lot, but I have to keep in mind that there are gonna be other virtual machines and other workloads that I want to deploy to this cluster during this project. Thankfully, I still have some options, as vRealize Operations will allow me to stack multiple what-if scenarios. So I can take this new TKG deployment scenario and run this right alongside another scenario where I model adding new hosts to my vSphere cluster. So I'm going to save this scenario, and then I'm going to model adding new vSAN hosts to my vSphere cluster. And just like before, I need to give the scenario a name, and select the cluster and data center which I want to deploy it to. And now I can select the type of server that I want to add to this cluster. So I can select the model server that's already in this cluster. Click OK. So I'm going to model this based on a start date of today and an end date of a year from now. And then if I scroll down here I can actually save this scenario. And then what we can do is we can stack these two scenarios on top of each other. So if I select my new TKG cluster scenario as well as my expand VCF cluster, I can run these two together. And what vRealize Operations is showing me here is this is the timeline. So I'm going to model this based on deploying the new HCI node today and then the TKG clusters a little bit later on down the road. So let's go ahead and run this scenario. And we see that we do have enough capacity to meet the demands of this deployment. And in fact, we've actually got a little bit of extra because we've taken our capacity from 132 days all the way up to 198. So let's scroll down here and look at each of the resources. So this is looking at our CPU. This is how much CPU we have today. And then this is when we add our new HCI node. And then down here is actually looking at what our expected utilization is in the future. So this is before we've deployed the new virtual machines. And then this is what it's going to look like after we deploy the virtual machines. And then of course we're going to delete them a little bit later in October. So everything kind of flattens out a little bit. We can see the same for memory as well as disk space. Now remember this was actually our constraint before. So again, we can see this is our disk space today. This is when we deploy the new node. And in this cluster, we've been deploying a lot of virtual machines lately, so we're actually seeing a lot of growth in our consumption of disk space. So vRealize Operations has actually mapped this out in this trend line here. And then this is, again, where we're expecting to deploy these virtual machines. And it goes along the same trend line as what vRealize Operations is predicting for our, our disk space. And then finally, we delete them down here. Remember where vRealize Operations said we were going to go over by 8 gigs? Well, this is exactly where that happens. You can see right at the end of our project is where we cross the capacity line. vRealize Operations can also alert us when things happen to our vSphere pods. So if I go into alerts here and look at my alert definitions, I'm going to run a filter here for pod. And you can see all of the alerts for vSphere pods and vRealize Operations. For example, if I have a pod where CPU usage is at 100% for an extended period of time, it can trigger an alert and send me an email, a Slack message, it could open up a ServiceNow incident, or it could take an automatic remediation action through vRealize Orchestrator. There's also a number of reports that are available. So if I go into my reports here, and if I just do a quick search for pod, 
there's a capacity report for pods. So let's go ahead and run this and see what sort of information we can get. So I'm going to run this report on my VCF workload vCenter. Click OK. And now if I go into the generated reports, we can see the actual reports. I'm going to open up the PDF version here and scroll down. And we've got information about the total number of pods in our environment. That's cool. But then down here is information about the capacity and the utilization of each of our pods. So this is actually going to be very useful to me so I can keep an eye on any pods that may be reaching their capacity limits so that I can plan ahead and be very proactive about this. Now let's close this report and take a look at some of the other reports that are available. So I'm going to go back to my report templates, close my pods, and do a filter for namespace. And I have configuration reports and inventory reports for each of my namespaces. I can also run these reports for my Tanzu Kubernetes clusters, as well as for my supervisor clusters. So this was a quick look at what's available in vRealize operations for vSphere with Kubernetes. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, and for more information, visit the vRealize operations page on your screen. Thank you so much for watching.